The next presenter I was saying, I love him. He's amazing. Every single time I see him, his energy is consistent. He's consistent with his people. The only reason why he is not internationally known around the entire world is because he's too dangerous. But he is a blessing to us that know him and get to experience his genius, his brilliance, his magnificence. Is Andrew Mohammed not magnificent? Yes. So why are we sitting down? I don't understand. This is a true champion of our community. Come on, a we true need representation need of our African nation. Yeah? Stand, stand, so stand. So for us to Let's really welcome our champion, let him feel appreciated as he deserves. Please, thank you yeah? so much. We appreciate you for your, your commitment to the so day. So this is what we're going to do. Yeah. We're going to clap and we're going to stomp our feet as we introduce the investigator, Papa G. The motivational speaker, the breakdown movie taker, Andrew Mohammed. Every time, one, two, one, two, one, two. Thank you so much, thank you so much. Cheese, cheese. Lick shot from Babylon Buck Foot. Rastafari. I'm loving this vibe, man. If you're happy to be black, make some noise. You don't know, you don't know, you don't know. You don't know. Okay. Boy, we got a great, 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 great. Get ready for today because you know what I feel like? Where's Leo Marshall, man? That brother had to drop the mic. He had to drop the mic. And I want to announce something a bit later on. I think today we're going to make history today. So those of you that know me, you know always like start with a little icebreaker. All right, let's get into something. Little icebreaker, okay? So over here. Your team A, Chase, and over at your team B, Brat. Okay, you done know, you done know. All right, just want to see Hollywood top romantic couples, not my romantic couples, Hollywood. All right, so team A, I want to see how bad you are, if you know your movies, because I'm a movie man. Team A, let's have a look. We're going to have a look now and see if you know your movie. If I say Johnny and Baby, what film? Oh gosh, all right sister, you're, you're rough, you're rough. Team B, they're bad. Okay, Sam and Molly. Sam and Molly, come on man. No one? Oh gosh, ghosts. Oh. Let's go back onto this side, man. We're talking about love today, love. Jack and Ennis, oh gosh. Jack and Ennis. No? Broke back, sorry. I'm sorry. I said I'm sorry. Don't hate, man. You black people, brother. Cha. Over here, over here. We're talking about love. Sam and Sally and Harry. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Chase. Over here. Come on now. If I said to you, let's have a look. If I said to you, Kim and Edward. Lord God, sister, who are you, man? You got it. Over here. Edward and Bella. Come on. Twilight. Okay. Jeez. Over here. Forrest and Jenny. Forrest Gump. Okay, 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 okay. Over here. Jeez. Oh, let's move. Red and Scarlet. Gone with the wind. Oh, you lot are bad. You lot are bad. Over here. Over here. Thomas and Vada. Vader. If you're bad, talk to me now, sis. Oh, you got to be rough to walk walking me. You got to be rough, no? Oh, gosh. Yeah, 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 yeah. My girl, my girl. Over here. Han Solo and Princess Leia. All right, all right, all right, all right. Danny and Sandy. Greece. Okay. <laughs> Let's get over it now. Jack and Rose. Titanic. 
All right. All right. Now, I can see some pure mixed faces at me at the moment. Some pure mixed faces. So what I'm going to do now, let's switch the stilo. Yeah? Let's switch the stilo. Is it who's? Someone's blocking that light. Okay. Yes, please. Yeah. Fant fantastic. Oh, thank you, brother. Yeah? So let's switch the stilo, okay? Because you don't know pure white people, man. Sure. Let's... We're pure sellouts, man. Sure. All right. Let's move to black couples now. And I bet you none of you know none of this now. None of this. All right. So if I showed you this image here coming up, is that different world, Cosby Show, or Fresh Prince? All right, Cosby Show. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go over it now. We're going to get a bit harder. Yeah. Do the right thing. School days. Baby boy. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. You look more like you're bad. Okay, let's go over here. Yeah, you don't know that one. You don't know. Blackish. Living single or love that girl. Blackish. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Oh, you don't know that one. Best man. Higher learning or brown sugar. Best man. Oh, brown sugar. Oh, five heartbeats, love and basketball. How still are the group? Love and basketball. Okay, no, that's what you want. I'm not going to go with. I'm sorry. Don't ever step to me. Don't you ever step to me again. All right, I'm going to manage this side now. Watch this one now. Jerry Maguire, barbershop or Friday? Huh? Jerry Maguire. Okay, 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 okay. All right. Let me slap up this side again now, sure. All right, let me go, let me go, let me go. Yeah, yeah, you don't know that one. Stop your noise, set it off. Love and basketball, lean on me. All right, all right, you got Davis, you got Davis, you got Davis, you got Davis. Okay, over here. Oh, you don't know. Boomerang, Love Jones, Soul Food. Love Jones, okay, 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 okay. Rastafari. Okay, over here. Oh, you don't know. Back in the day, the help. Waiting to excel. Nutty professor. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Jeez. Oh, only the big man know this one. Only big man, the best man. Players club. Or a thin line between love and hate. You don't know. You don't, the best man. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Oh, you don't know. Oh, you don't know. Disappearing acts. Rosewood. Higher learning. You don't know. Disappearing acts. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, you don't know. You don't know. You gotta know your movies for this one. Juice. Above the rim. Poetic justice. Juice. Oh, oh. Oh, poetic justice. Okay, okay, okay. Sure. All right. Jeez. Right. Make some noise if you're happy to be black. Today is about black love, man. The hidden science of black love. And we're going to blow it up today, brothers and sisters. Are you ready? Before we carry on, please. See, I don't believe in any accidents in the universe. I believe that everything is organized and designed. So the person that you're sitting beside, when I'm speaking to you, that person's in your life sitting beside you right now for a reason. So please turn to that brother or sister sitting beside you. Look them in their eyes and look them and say a meaning and feeling and emotion. Lick shop on Babylon Buckfoot. Tell them. We're going to pure licking shot today, brethren. We've got the conscious rust in the house today. So we're going to show them how we fall down in London. Okay, okay. Now listen up. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to be... Look, man, when you're, when you're looking at me today, look. You're looking at someone who's pregnant, brothers. I 
want to deliver a baby today, man. Don't laugh, sister, please. I want to deliver a baby today. So you're going to help me push today, yeah? Because I want, I want to deliver. Brothers and sisters, my name is Andrew Mohammed. They call me the investigator. I run, a, I run a company called Real Talk, Real Action. We work in schools up and down the country. I have a team that's with me. We call ourselves the investigators, and we work especially with the youth and the young people. I bought one of the queens of the team today, and I'm telling you now, those of you who've seen him for, you know, you know she's just pure fire, man. She's literally, um, she worked with me for about a year and a half, placed in one school for a year and a half. By the time that year and a half finished, the owner of the schools, he owns about 10 schools, he contacted me, he said, Andrew, I want to steal one, one of your members of staff. I said, go ahead, man, because it ain't about just holding on to anyone. Let everyone develop. And guess what? He said, Andrew, I want to move from your team and become the head teacher of my school. That's the level. This sister is awesome. This sister is fantastic. So brothers and sisters, make some black noise for Lady Adele. Make some noise. This one, I'm going to get you. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Black Sisters. Yeah. I need your support today because I'm the only woman up here, it seems. And we have got a voice, have we not? And we know about black love, do we not? All right, so that's where we're going to start today. Now, I've started with this um, famous person. Who is this? <laughs> Sorry? Oh, I call him Eros, but Cupid is another name for him. So, Cupid is where a lot of love, they say, starts. So I'm just going to start by looking at love in our, in our society. So, where is it? Okay. Who is this famous love couple in English literature? Mr. Darcy and, and Elizabeth Bennet from Jane Eyre. Okay. Who is this um, love couple in, um, in the theater. Romeo and Juliet by Shakespeare. This love couple in the theater, in um, cinema. Love story, Jennifer and Oliver. And this love couple from musicals. Maria and Jet from West Side Story. Now these are famous love couples and they share many things in common. Pain, selflessness, acceptance, trust, healing, growth, communication, respect, affection, compassion, oh sorry, companionship, protection, harmony, fearlessness, and forgiveness. But there is one, I must keep out the screen, there's one love couple that is the most influential throughout the whole of history from back in time. Anybody know who that is? No, older than Romeo and Juliet. Older than Antony and Cleopatra. Nefertiti, older than that. Osiris and uh, Aser and Isis. Now this love couple here are considered to be still the most influential love couple on this planet of existence. And the reason for that is, is that their love story is all about self-love, our love for ourselves. Their love story is about a love for a partner, and their love story is about love of children. And the most important thing about them, about Isis, about us, is that Isis is born of Ma'at. And Ma'at is the original mother, and she comes from an understanding and knowledge of the black woman in Kemet. So, so she, she represents, represents us. So Isis, in the beginning there was Isis, oldest of the old. She was the goddess from whom all becoming arose. It is said that Isis gave birth to the sun when he rose upon the earth for the first time. She is considered the lady of heaven, the queen of the earth, and the mistress of the underworld. She covers the mind, the body, and the soul. Now Isis is the personification of this person here. Who is this goddess? The goddess Ma'at. She personifies Ma'at. Now Ma'at was put upon the earth by Ra. 
Ra recognized that within us we had a dark side. We had passions that needed to be controlled. And the only way we could control our passions was through my art because she would help us discipline ourselves and she would teach us what love was all about. So who is Ma'at? Ma'at is about justice, about harmony, about balance, about order, morality, cosmic order, and truth. And if we know Ma'at, we don't just know ourselves, but we know how to be our true self, who we really are as women. So how does a love story begin? Asur is now the ruler. He has got his kingship through his ancestors, a lineage that goes way back to the beginning of time. We, as men and as women who come from out of Africa, we also have that kingship that comes from that ancestral lineage from the beginning of time. It is a royal kingship. We are a royal people. And you will see that the feather of Ma'at is all around him because he has learned to manage his emotions and manage his um, dark side and to manage his passions and discipline them because he lives by the principles of Ma'at, by this justice, by this balance, and by this harmony. He is married to Isis. Now, Isis is his sister, and we're not talking about incest here. We're talking about he is married to that feminine side of himself. He's married to that side that represents um, order and harmony and balance. He's married to that side which manages that warrior spirit within him. And you will see in images that they're always touching each other. Look, they're all arms around each other. Somebody, one of them is always touching the other person. Now, this is quite interesting when you look at this. Royal family, you're not allowed to touch. The queen is very upset with her grandson and his wife because they refuse to not touch each other in public. But that is where we come from. So, we have to, as individuals, get that balance. We have to balance our own internal feminine and masculine energy. We have to harmonize um, women with our men so that we can recognize that we are not complete without them and they are not complete without us. And we have to live by the principles and be those principles if our children are to stand a chance. So what happens in this love affair? Set is jealous and in an angry rage, he chooses to kill Osir. He is angry with us, sir, because he has got that balance between the feminine and the masculine side within him. He is married to Isis, which represents that, that he is a balanced man and that he has found true love. And Set knows that he doesn't have that. And we find that today in the story of Cain and Abel. We find it, this rage, in our young black men in particular, as they are attacking each other. And we find that in the breakup of the black family home. This rage, this attack by a set on a sir, we see all around us. Because without the principles of Ma'at, we cannot love ourselves. We start to hate ourselves, and then we project that onto our young people. So, we need to remember who we are in that love. We need to get back to the essence of who we are. We need to know our history. We need to know our people. And we need to reunite with our collective consciousness if black love is to come back into the community and if black love is to spread out to all of us and our children. This is what happens when it doesn't exist. Stop crying. Stop with the tears. Don't cry. Pick yourself up. Stop with the emotions. Don't be a pussy. Don't let nobody disrespect you. Be cool and be kind of a dick. Always keep your mind. Nobody likes a tattletale. Bros come before the hoes. Don't let you women run your life. You bitch. What a fag. Get laid. Do something. Be a man. Be a man. Grow some balls. This is what we do to our young men. The three most destructive words that every man receives when he's a boy is when he's told to be a man. 
we've constructed an idea of masculinity in the United States that doesn't give young boys a way to feel secure in their masculinity. So we make them go prove it all the time. Within their peer group culture, each of them is posturing based on how the other boys are posturing. And what they end up missing is what they each really want, which is just that closeness. In good times, guys are like really close to each other. But when things get a little bit worse, you're on your own. From middle school, I had four really close friends. Once I kind of went into high school, I struggle finding people I can talk to because I feel like I'm not supposed to get help. Our kids get up every morning. They have to prepare their mask for how they're going to walk to school. A lot of our students don't know how to take the mask off. What is it you don't let people see? Almost 90% of you have pain and anger on the back of that paper. If you never cry, then you have all these feelings stuffed up inside of you, and then you can't get them out. They really buy into the, a culture that doesn't value what we've feminized. If we're in a culture that doesn't value caring, doesn't value relationships, doesn't value empathy, you are going to have boys and girls, men and women, go crazy. So without the principle of my arts for our young men, they're unable to balance their, their masculinity with their feminine side. We have told our young men that emotions are not a thing that is allowed to be um, seen or witnessed. And so without that, we're going to lose another generation. And this is where us as women come into that place. Now, when a sir was killed, it is said that Isis wept endlessly. When the man of her dreams, the man that she loved died, she wept endlessly. And she went on a mission to find him. Because what happened is Set cut, cut his body up into, anybody know how many pieces? 42 pieces, it said, and scattered them across Egypt. He couldn't afford for a sir to come back in any shape or form. And she went on a mission to find every part of his body. And what she did, she didn't go on her own. She took her sister Nephites. Now, what's interesting about Nephites is that Nephites is married to Set the very same man who killed Osir. But she recognized the value of Ma'at and the principle and she upheld them. And even though her husband didn't, she didn't decide she would be jealous of, of Isis. She didn't decide she was gonna let her down. She went with her sister to search for every part of Osir's body. And sometimes we as sisters, what we do, we, have, we ha lose the values for ourselves. Inwardly, we don't have self-worth anymore, and we are bringing ourselves down. And sometimes we as sisters get involved in the relationships of other people, and rather than help to bring it up, we can sometimes end the destruction of it. So we need to be really careful how we get involved here. So we need to love enough. What Isis wanted to do, she wanted to get her husband back together long enough that she could have a child. Now this child will be a unity not of this world, but in order, a unity not of this world, but in order to conquer the world. She knew that if she could have his son, she would now conquer the world. Oops. So this symbol here, this is a, it's called a tenaku, but it's also called the obelisk, and these are found all over the world. This is the famous one down there in, um, in Washington, D.C. But the obelisk, is a symbol of the god Ra. And it is thought that it's actually a petrified sun ray. That means a sun ray that's been made solid. And within that, Ra was supposed to live. The life giver, the creator, was supposed to reside in the obelisk. Now, there was one part of um, a sir that could not be found. And that was his manhood. Because Set realized that if um, a sir could be put together completely, then his rule and his reign would be over because then a sir would come back, he would cl claim his throne, and he would be able to have children again. And so, Ma'at could raise. And so what he did, he threw the manhood into the river and it got eaten, never to be used at all. And what that means now for us as women is that we become weakened because as time went on, we now become dependent on a white savior. So whether that's a white Jesus, or a white slave master, or a white educational European system, or a European banking system, but we become weakened to that. And our men, 
They are also weakened because now they are no longer a protector. Now they're no longer the provider. And as a result of that, we women, we keep looking to our European savior and then we raise our young boys in exactly the same way. So we have to be really careful of that and change that narrative. So all the pieces are now back together and um, they are sewn very intricately with the help of Anubis or Thoth. And Thoth is the husband of Ma'at, the very same principles of love, balance and harmony that we all need in our lives. So we as individuals, we need to sew our own lives back together. We need to know our self-worth, our history, our purpose and our potential. And as women, for our men, we need to make them whole. We need to uplift them and we need to empower them. And the last part that ISIS had to do was to breathe into us, sir, the breath of life. So we need to inhale our own breath of life and we need to inhale into our men or breathe into our men their breath of life. And what is that? It's to give back our men and give back our boys hope, purpose and potential. And we need to feel the fear and do it anyway. Because what Isis did, she loved her husband anyway. She gave him purpose anyway. She empowered him anyway. And even without his manhood, she was able to create life anyway. And that's where we need to be. We need to, sisters, look at the journey of our men and our boys. We need to have see how their demise from kingship down to slavery, down to dependence, down to total emasculation. This is what has happened to our men over the ages. Because if we don't know and reflect on the journey of our men, we will not know the journey of our boys and the cycle will continue. We will raise our girls in a way that they'll continue this cycle. Is it going down? Sorry, they need to go down? Yeah, yeah. we just right, okay. remember to respect the mic. So please, everyone, if you're talking, please keep it a hushed voice so everyone can hear the science that has been delivered. Thank, Thank you, Adele. So we need to know the journey of our men throughout history. We need to stand back and have a look at what our men have been through. We started off, they start off as kings, then they, be, they became enslaved, then we become dependent on the European system, and now there's a total emasculation spiritually, mentally, and physically. And until we know the journey of our men, we will never be able to help our boys in the journey that they are going through. So what is love? It's an extension of our true nature. It's the principles of ma'at in action. And we, we love too easily because we fear being alone more than we fear making the wrong choice. Yeah, sometimes we sit there and we think, I don't want to be alone in my life. This man will do, this woman will do. But if we're truly honest to ourselves, we will then start making the right choices. So what does love look like? It's something, it's an action. It's not chocolates and it's not roses, because love can also be painful. But it speaks kindly, it forgives quickly, accepts unconditionally, it gives generously, expresses courageously, laughs loudly, feels deeply, listens sincerely, judges infrequently, trusts willingly and supports completely. That's what love looks like. We are what we attract. So we also need to be careful of the choices that we make. And some of us might now be saying we're sitting here in a loveless relationship. We are unable to love our own selves, maybe. We may not be able to love our partners. We may be struggling to love our children. But what we need to do, we need to look at our men and we need to look behind the facade, the mask that that gentleman was talking about in the video clip. We need to look behind the mask. We need to look into their heart. We have to search for the man within. We need to bring out the king within and we need to empower the God that is within our men. And that's the way we save our men and we save our boys. And once we do that and we escape and uh, come away from the European ideology of love, where there's no physical attention, no physical affection in the way that we believe, where there is no balance and there's no harmony, we can show and carry out love. 
Our men and our boys are all kings in the waiting. It is our job as women to bring those kings out so that they can rule and take their rightful place back in our lives, back in society, and we can bring and raise up another generation of men. Whoever does not love God does not know God because God, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. What does that mean? There is the God and the goddess within all of us. If we don't see the God and the goddess within ourselves, then we cannot know love. And so I challenge us all today to stand back, sisters, and look at our men and look at our sons and understand their journey so we can help them go forward, that we can take out our young kings that are in the waiting so that they can take the story further in the right direction. And that way, I believe that through the principles of my art, we will create a new generation of men, a new generation of women, and the right generation of love. Thank you very much. Come on, brothers and sisters, make some noise, man. Fantastic, fantastic. Yes, pure love, pure love. And that's a head teacher in East London now, brothers and sisters. And so, you know, the children there are being fed correct and being fed right. Okay, so, brothers and sisters, we got our, we're going to, you know, I brought a powerful team with me today, man, because we want to break up the stereotype what black love looks like. Yeah? So literally, I've invited down a mother and a son. And I want you to show you what our love frequency via music doesn't always have to be the drum and the bass, but we are so multifaceted. And then when this sister finishes, you show the love, man. Because she's going around and she's, and she's gone into some of the schools as well and what have you, okay? And blown the youth apart. Seriously. So brothers and sisters, make some boo yaka noise for Sister Andrea. Come on, Bob and Nathaniel, come on down. Here they are. Make some noise. We're going to make love today. Hello everyone, good evening. Um, so basically, I'm hello, one, two. Um, so I'm gonna sing with my son. I, I have the great honor of singing with my son who's seriously talented. Um, I can't believe we get this opportunity to perform together as a family. And, um, and I'm gonna sing something for you and it's about it's about the vibration of the song rather than about the lyrics um, or even the language. So I ask you to be open-minded and hopefully you'll like it. Actually, I'll just tell you quickly my story. So basically, I always wanted to sing. I, I kind of don't want to tell you what I'm going to do, but I always wanted to sing this, this particular style of music, but I was told I couldn't because of the color of my skin. So I never tried. I just thought, okay, well, they know. And I just didn't try until recently. And um, this is the outcome.
Phew. <laughs> I was a little bit scared. <laughs> um, it was either you was going to enjoy it or we'd get stoned. Um, so we're, we're still alive, skin intact. Um, so we'll do this one other piece for you, if that's all right with you. And again, even though we're singing in another language, it's nothing to do with the language. It's the language of vibration and connection and healing. And that's what it is for us. So I hope you enjoy this second one. Oh, 
Come on, brothers and sisters. If you know the history of classical music, you know it belongs to us as a people. Don't get it twisted. They stole rock and roll. They stole jazz. They're stealing hip hop. Don't let them steal our culture. Make some noise one more time for mother and son. Woo! Thank you, sis. Brothers and sisters, sometimes words are not needed. You know what I'm saying? So listen, what I want you to do, please join me in this, man. Again, turn to the brother or sister beside you. I told you when I'm teaching, that's what we do, man. You turn to the brother or sister beside you. Look them in the eyes and just go like this. Just do that, man. Do that, do that. Because words are not needed sometimes. <laughs> words are not needed. Sure. Lick shot from Babylon. Let's get into something today. That was a warm up. Now we start the breakdown. The hidden science of black love, pure love to Bubba Leon Marshall. All right, let's get into something on this man. Sorry about that. That was my fault, sorry about that. Okay, let's get into this then. So there's four parts to this breakdown. I want to finish all four today. Part one. Let's show some love, man. Let's show some love. Let's show some love. And black love is black magic. What is black love? All right, that's what we're talking about today. So let's have a look at some black love, man. Is it possible to turn off some more lights, Leon? Is it possible? You want to try getting there as dark as possible. Grab hold of my hand. You show some love, man. Understand me. And you don't appreciate, we don't appreciate. Just to do this was a revolution. Study the movie history. As a people, we could not even do that. We gotta show some love. I want to make today Black Love Day. A day that we celebrate. When it's obvious that we both care. So take me to the moon. I want to be pure love. And you know what? Turn to the brother or sister beside you. I'm getting excited now. I don't care if there's a man or woman beside you. Just give them a little hug, man. Show them black love. I don't care who it is. I don't care if, they, if you don't know them. I don't care if you don't like them. I don't care if they're damn ugly. You hug them. We need more love, man. We need more love. Does anyone know what movie this is? This is. Anyone heard of this movie before? All right, then no one knows. It's a movie called Something Good. It first was released in 1898. And the reason why this movie is in the Hall of Historical um, Fame is because this is the first movie that had the first black kiss. So this is the very first time a black person was seen kissing on camera. This made history, and you can see how happy they looked, especially the brother. <laughs> yeah, so that made history. That was the very first time a black person was seen kissing. Does anyone know who this person is? Anyone? No? Okay, we're gonna go in. Remember that man's face? We're gonna go into him in a bit, in a second. I'm Robert Guillaume, 
As a youngster, I used to love to go to the movies. And like all youngsters, I was fascinated by the images and characters I saw there. For me, there was nothing better than escaping into a dark theater, into a world of make-believe. But as I grew up, I came to realize that in this world of make-believe, this world of adventure, laughs, and happy endings, blacks were permitted to play only certain types of roles and characters, mostly servants and Pullman porters. American film became a mirror for American life. Listen. And the image of blacks reflected in that mirror was often distorted. But some blacks, using their creativity and imagination, transcended these stereotypes, making a unique and significant contribution to American film. Yeah? So as a young child, he used to love going to cinema. Why? But he was distorted with the view... Butlers, waiters, porters. That was in the 1930s and 40s, Hollywood offered African-American actors few roles beyond servile ones. Would you ask him for me, Mr. Allen? The film historian Donald Bogle has called the 30s the age of the Negro servant, and the careers of great performers like Clarence Muse and Teresa Harris confirm this marginality. Too often, these actors were not even credited. Someone's going to insult you today if you get out of bed. The, the off-screen of reality was always more complex. However demeaning the roles, they also sustained careers for performers who belonged to another Hollywood, one that included behind-the-scenes activism and the ongoing struggle for creative autonomy. Clarence Muse, often cast as butler or a porter, collaborated with the poet Langston Hughes on the script and the songs for Way Down South, released by RKO in 1939, the same year as Gone with the Wind. I know you're trying to do the best you can for Mars Tim. I'm trying to do the best I can for him, too, sir. Gone with the Wind is a regressive fantasy, of course, but as Bogle points out, its black actors transformed their slaves into complex human beings. Hattie McDaniel, who plays Mammy, became the first African-American actor to win an Oscar, but at the time she was also harshly criticized for helping to perpetuate negative representations. Oh, now, Miss Scarlett, you... McDaniel's complicated legacy is that she made Mammy more than just a caricature. Hattie McDaniel is the most famous of three siblings who appeared frequently in the old Hollywood. Her brother, Sam, had more than 200 roles to his name, many uncredited. Their sister, Etta, can be seen, however briefly, in films like Son of Dracula. Working within a white supremacist system, the McDaniels and other black performers did what they could to infuse their limited roles with artistry and dignity. Even as modern audiences cringe at these stereotypes, it is possible to appreciate the artists who played them. And sometimes, what we see in a movie like the RKO Western, The Arizonian, suggests a whole other dimension to the story. So we played those menial roles so well that we gave them characters and complex personalities. That's how great we were, okay? But we also didn't get those chances, so we will all grow up understanding that this was the role in 3, and the image Oscars of black people. That have been awarded since 1929. 3, Oscars. More than 30 have been given to people of color. I have told you and told you. Many of them for roles based on true stories, therefore could never have been played by white actors anyway. It's not like Leonardo DiCaprio could play Nelson Mandela. One of the only ways where black people get to play the lead is literally where there is no white competition. David Oyelowo played Lewis Gaines in The Butler, a movie about an African-American White House butler who served eight American presidents. Pam Williams, one of the movie's producers, Listen. says that some investors refused to fund it unless she gave the white actors bigger roles. One potential investor asked, could we give the butler a white best friend? I don't think these the are the things that go on behind the scenes. racist when they said these things. I think but they, they racist. would buy into the myth that is white people want to see white people on screen, so how can we put more of them into a black movie to make it more acceptable? <laughs> Yeah? So that's what we've been living under, okay? So who's this man again I came back into? No, his name is Will Ayes. And he created, he has what's called the Hayes Code. Yeah, what is the Hayes Code? He was um, appointed by Hollywood to clean up Hollywood, okay? But this Hayes Code still lives, that spirit still lives today. a list of don'ts and be carefuls. These are the Based Hayes on codes. Of items that are commonly rejected by local censorship boards. 
These included 11. Yeah, these are the things that they banned in Hollywood. If you notice one of them, number five says what? So they don't allow it. They said, whatever you do, don't show white people as being slaves. Think about they knew that the power of what imagery does to the mind. But yet all the time we see is what? Black slavery. So much that now we invest in black slavery films continuously, but they made sure don't. And honestly, this one here, they were not allowed to see any affection or sexual relations between black and white. And they, a part of the code as well is that you will not, do not publish or do not push black people showing affection to each other. That was a code. This ain't, to many of us, we kind of instinctively knew it. But we didn't know that there was a policy in Hollywood to make sure this is done. And so therefore, brothers and sisters, yeah, we've got to understand that they, the hidden hand that holds us down is no conspiracy theory, it's fact. They sit down and then put down the things that they don't want to see us evolve on any type of level. So what's happened? If you go back to Hollywood history, it started off by the lynching and killing of black people. This is one of the most famous films in Hollywood. They actually say it's the first film of Hollywood. What's the name of this film? Birth of a Nation, man. And you imagine, we ain't done nothing to Hollywood. But the very first Hollywood film that's in the um, National State Library in America, okay, Congressional Library, is that they say that this is the greatest film ever made. And look, and it's white people playing black people. Yeah, black and dark. If you, if you haven't seen this film, go back and watch it, please. You'll see the real meaning of Hollywood. I remember, I'm dealing with love, but from a film perspective. So make sure you understand that Hollywood is never our friend. It's always about killing of our people. That's why I loved this brother. This brother. Because he came out of another film called The Birth of a Nation, and he turned it around. And I'm telling you, man, do you realize that he's paid a price for that film? They've now tried to get him out of Hollywood completely. So even though he's not here today, make some noise for our brother, man, who stood up. Because he didn't have to do this. He made the birth of a nation about our liberation. And I'll tell you something, Hollywood has not changed. The popular actor is under fire tonight for comments he made during an interview. What he said about wanting to kill someone. Here's ABC's Lindsay Davis. A brutally honest admission from actor Liam Neeson in an interview with The Independent, promoting his latest movie, Cold Pursuit, where he plays a man seeking revenge. Gonna kill him. He says he understands the rage that can drive a person to revenge, sharing his own real-life reaction to hearing that a woman close to him was raped. I asked, did she know who it was? No. What color were they? She said it was a black person. The actor says he actually carried a billy club-like weapon called a kosh. I went up and down areas with a kosh, hoping I'd be approached by somebody. I'm ashamed to say that. And I did it for maybe a week, hoping some black b would come out of a pub imagine? and have a go at me about something, you know, so that I could kill him. Neeson says he now realizes just how awful his behavior was. It was horrible, horrible when I think back, but I did that, and I've never admitted that. This happened 40 years ago, but is just... Happened 40 years ago, but you still call it a black... B b and the way he said it, feeling. And what, what, what you don't appreciate, you've got many black people saying, give him a medal. At least he's being honest and he's, he, he's sorry. Listen, man, can you imagine the media response if he said, I wanted to kill a black Jewish? You would never, he would never work again. They'd have locked him up. He's talking about lynching us as a people. I'll tell you, man, if he wanted to go around walking around the streets for the black, let him come to Brixton. Let him come to Harlesden. Because you see, with these people, don't fall for the crocodile tears. He feels the same way. See, if he said it a different way, I could understand. But the, 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 the passion of his voice, that man don't love black people. And you look at all of his films, exactly the same. Killing people who literally, and that's why I must admit, I'm, I'm a Trekkie. I don't care, man. I'm a nerd, yeah? I love Star Trek. But remember what we talked about the Haze Code? Star Trek made history because of this one scene in 1968. It showed the first interracial kiss. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the way they want you to feel. Makes them think that they're alive. But I want you to look at Captain Kirk when the kiss is delivered. I wish I could stop trembling. Because she's passionate. Try Watch him. To think of them. <laughs> Try. The way they've done this. She wants to, but watch him. I'm thinking. I'm thinking of all the times on the Enterprise when I was scared to death. <laughs> Quickly turn his head. You're so busy at your command. And I would hear your voice from all parts of the ship. She's telling him how she really likes him all the time. Fate. And now they're making me tremble. Now watch the first kiss they say on TV. But I'm not afraid. Watch Captain Kirk. I am not afraid. I look petrified. <laughs> watch him, watch him, watch him. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Watch him, watch him. Go ahead, go ahead. Watch him, watch his eyes, watch his eyes. <laughs> That's deep. Imagery says a lot. But when you go into the records, they say that was the first interracial kiss. But in fact, it was done in... Who remembers Granada TV? Jeez, remember them days there? There was a program, if you go back to the historical books, called You and Your Small Corner. And in 1962, this scene took place. Eight, so yes, six years before Star Trek. I was put with boys. And it's about a Jamaican brother who um, joined... I think Oxford University. But you didn't come just when you wanted to have a bash. Perhaps that was what it was, only you just didn't know how. It isn't that, is it? So that was actually the first interracial kiss in 1962. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Let me move on. Yeah? So let's get back to the Hayes Code. So Hollywood... They've got a written policy towards us. Movies could contain no profanity or nudity. Criminals always had to be punished. Adultery couldn't, be look, look, couldn't look appealing. No graphic violence. Politicians and religious figures couldn't be depicted as corrupted or buffoonish. Listen, races couldn't mix. Black, black actors generally played servers until 1960s. So you've got to understand, this is a serious situation. And so... <laughs> Even when it came to roots, many of us don't appreciate it was against the law at that time for black people to show affection to each other. If a slave was seen um, crying or showing empathy for another brother or sister, they could be whipped to death. So this is what happened, as you remember, the famous scene in Kunta Kinte and Toby. Take them up. And watch the reactions of the so-called slaves. I am off. <laughs> and they made sure that we whipped each other. James, your name is Toby. I want to hear you say it. Your name is Toby. Never forget. You're going to learn to say your name. Let me hear you say it. We're the only What's people around the world that have lost the whole Kunta. name and culture. Kunta Kinte. Kunta Kinte. Trying to fight for his African roots, man. When the master gives you something, you take it. He gave it a name. It's a nice name. It's Toby. And it's going to be you. And the so-called slaves, our African brothers and sisters, look at them. No, they could not show emotion. Me. Think about what it does to the psychology of their children and generations. We cannot, we have to be tough. Don't show emotions to other black people. If they're going through hell, leave them. I'm okay. I want to this hear you see. say your name. Your name is Toby. What's your name? Gunther. These are one of the first ones that woke me up back in the day. Lord God. All of us. Yes, sister. Sorry. 
They're gonna whip him dead. You're not allowed to show tears. What's your name? Say it. Toby. Who are you? Say your name. Let's not forget. What's your name? Toby. So we had to be a tough people, man. Say it again. Say it louder so they all can hear you. What's your name? Break the black man. Break the African spirit. Never forget how we came here. Toby. And that's why I love all of you so much, man. Because you're reclaiming your heritage, man. Men of our brothers and sisters are just like that. They're broken. Cut him down. No emotion. No one can come and help him. Until the slave master goes. So what's happened to us then, brothers and sisters? We have had to be tough. We grew up tough. We grew up so tough, and we're so talented as a people, we make tough look good. We make tough look style. We can drop it in our music and it's like, yeah, go on. Now, white people want to be tough. Because we just do it so good, man. You know what I'm saying? If you know this track, sing the words with me, OK? And think about, brother, brother, you're in the brother. Brother, you in the front of me. You're still in, you're still in it, bro. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. If, if, if you know this track, man, feel the words because I love this brother. And I love the words that he gave us. But he gave us the image and understanding. Big tune. Let me hear you, black people. Black love. Camp where the thugs and camp at Two pound a weed in a backpack It in a your handbag Your knapsack it in a your backpack The smell of your girlfriend Black people, that's our energy Some boy not know this Them only come around like tourists And Jeez. with a few club sodas Bedtime stories And pose like them named Chuck Norris we I make tough look the good. Poor cast sandals and no back to the thugs. Them we do where them got to. Got to I do what they got to. Twice to shot to. Don't make them spot to. Unless you carry guns and lots to. A beer tough thing come we got back a to. We're gonna punch his roster. man stop laugh and block off traffic. Then them we learn pop off and them start clap it. We dip in file long and it a be trap it. Police for me in a jeep and them can't stop it. Some say them a play boy, a play boy rabbit. Funny man a get dropped like a bad habit. Some of other post the bits, you don't what have it. Just not far we I stand to alone. I drum for jam rock. Hey. I drum for jam rock. Out in the street, they call it murder. Let me hear you. I drum for jam dung. Poor people are dead at random. Police. All violence can't done Pure ghost and phantom The youth them get blind by stardom Now the king of kings are called Who will man to pick me So why you no know one if you with me To see this operation sick me Chase Chase You don't know So we're gonna show some empathy man Let's show some love That's why those of you who understand about the nation for example You gotta understand why You always see us with a what? A handkerchief. handkerchief. Do you know there's a science behind that? That's why that's always a part of the nation, because that represents the tears that we've got to wipe away from our ancestors and the tears that we wipe away from each other. In other words, we are men now, but men that have empathy, men that show love, men that literally are not afraid to cry, as our sister was talking about, man. Because if you understand the history of us as a people, man, we're going to show some love. Brothers and sisters, hug the brother or sister beside you right now. Show that person again some love, man. Because that's what today's about. The hidden science of black love. Don't be afraid to, to cry and shed tears for our people, man. Yeah? That's what today's all about, man. Black Love Day. Yeah? We're going to be going on this, man. So literally... Let's 
Let's go a bit more deeper. I'm out of my mind. Is everyone okay? Lick shot from Babylon Buckfoot. Rice and peas. Buffalo soldier. Dreadlock Rasta. Okay. Now, does anyone know? I'm going to behave myself. Don't I'm going to behave myself. Does anyone know what film this is? Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah? This film is deep. No, because you see, the way they done this film was so masterful. Yeah? And I know some of you got the books and you got the film. Yeah? But listen, see, this is a billionaire. He's cool. He's got everything, man. He's just, he's just Chris. You know what I'm saying? Yeah? And this is a scene where my, he's befriended her. But you know what? He said, you know, I want to show you a room downstairs in my house. Because I'm a billionaire. All right, here's the scene. It's just beyond this door. What is? My playroom. Like your Xbox and stuff? <laughs> it's important that you know you can leave at any time. See, he's, so, he's a gentleman. I meant what I said. The helicopter's on standby to take you whenever you want to go. Could you just open the door? Now, this is his room as a billionaire. Good looking. Young. White European male. Oh my God. Can you see it? So we need it to be darker in there. We do need to be darker. There are whips and shackles and... But the way they make it look so good is that this is the apex of sex and sex energy and, 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 and literally reaching the heights. So it's made it very mainstream, very acceptable. It's called a flogger. And I know as black people, you, you're running out to get your whips now. Because it looks cool, it looks good. Say something, please. It doesn't. <laughs> He's got his sticks. He's like, I mean, it's a dungeon. Do women do this to you or do you? No, I do this to women. With women. And he says you can leave if you, if you want to. He's a gentleman still. But let's go into this, man. Because he's deep as black people. We talk about black love today. And in order to understand this, because you see, we've got to, that's what I said, we're out of our mind. Because many of us, we think that the normal way is to be unnormal. Is to live other than what we are. So, to understand the history of this, you got to go back to the caves and hillsides of Europe. Are you with me okay? Are you getting vexed at me now? Okay, because I know I might be talking about your best friend Sally at work. I don't know what black people are very protective of Sally. But let's unlock Sally's history a little. Sally used to live in the caves and hillsides of Europe. And when we talk about Valentine's Day, do we understand what we're really talking about? Do we understand? Is this a concept? Can we find this in black love? Listen, let's, let's, let's investigate. Do we appreciate that there is no, no day called Valentine's Day that was done to hide the reality of who they are so that you can join in? The real day is called Lupercalia. What's it called? Lupercalia. Yeah? yeah, Lupercalia. Does anyone know what Lupercalia means? All right, let's go a bit more deeper then. Lupercalia comes from that image. Does anyone know what that image represents? It's Romulus and Remus. These are the founding fathers of what you call Rome and Europe. Yeah? And they were found in what they call the Lupercal Caves. And they said it was the she-wolf, yeah, that suckled the Europeans. See, mythology ain't just about the story. Don't look at the exact details of mythology. We used to tell some deep stories that hide symbolic truth. That's what myths is all about. 
And you got to understand, there was a time when Europeans were never chased in the kill hills and caves of Europe. The only thing that they had was what? The dog. And that's why they called the dog who? And that's why many of you got your, 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 your Dobermans and your, your pinches, whatever you okay? You understand the history of all of this. Why? Because it was called the Lupical. What is Lupical? Why is it held in February? Why did the Pope of Rome decide to speak out about sexual actions of priests in February on the news right now? Because when you look at the word February, and I love my brother um, Leo Marsh, if he's still in the house, because he said etymologic, um, if you go into the etymological roots of words, you find that. If you look into the dictionary and you find the root of the word February, it says purification. You stop there. Oh, February was the month just, you know, we purified ourselves. And, oh, gosh, you're so good. It's so pure. Shut up. What kind of purification are you talking about? You see, in Europe, this, was, this is how they purified themselves. I'm trying to show you where you got the 50 shades of grey coming in. And why Europeans love to beat and whip. We think it's, a, it's an orgasmic high. It's not for us. Yeah? Because in Europe, the Roman festival, the Lupercalia, is thought to be the origins of Valentine's Day, where men sacrificed goats and made whips from their skins, while women would line up to receive lashes as a part of fertility rate. They believe that if you whip the woman to where she's a bloody, literally pouring out of her skin, she can give birth to a child. That was the history of Europe. And so for the ancient Roman festival called Lupercalia was celebrated every year from where? The 13th to the 15th of February in honor of Lupercus, the wolf, the god of fertility. As enough, they, you see what happened? When Roman Catholic came through, when the, when the church came through, they realized we can't stop them doing this. So therefore we'll make up a saint called Valentine. And so all of you now, all Valentine, will you be my, shut up. Think about what you're saying. Investigate for yourself. Because as black people, we take everything. Everything. So, you see the whip there? These are famous pictures I'm showing you there, man. The, the hide, the whip, was in Latin, it's called Frebrua. Frebrua. Hence, you get the name February. February literally means the whip you beat the women with. That's what, yes, that's what they call it. Oh, you, child, you think I'm lying? Roman Festival Loop again. I know it's black people. If, I, if I'm not white, you're not going to... Shut up, you black man. You don't know what you're talking about. Give me a white man to teach me. The Roman Festival Lupercalia. Lupercalia, ancient festival. Ceremony was festival intended to secure fertility and keep out evil. Each Lupercalia began with the sacrifice of goats and a dog. Two of his priests and da 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 you see? And what they done, that's how you get the... Um, when you go to get your child christened, and then you, give it, and you put the water, um, the holy... No, it was blood on the foreheads. That's the origin of it. If you really... I can see black people looking vexed. Where's my security? No. Because I know some of you are going to attack me in a minute, man. <laughs> yeah? So in Europe, that was their purification. They would let go pure evil on each other. It was pure sexual perversion. And what would happen? That's how you got the film The Purge. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> I'm linking it back to movies. Because you'll see it all in the movies that if you know how to track the history, that is not us. We don't get our highs like that. And that's why when you read, another means of purification is given to a branch from a tree whose leaves are worn in priestly grounds. Ovid quips, Riley, in short, anything used to purify our bodies had the title of Frebrua, see? That's the word February. In the days of our what? Hairy ancestors. The caves in the other sides of Europe. Even whips and woodland gods were purifiers. According to Ovid, the Lupercalia features another kind of februm, something that was little more than S and M, if you know what that means. Yeah? It took place in mid February, celebrated with the wild civilian god Faunus, aka Pan. If you, if you go on Google, tap in Pan, you see he's, a, he's, an, he's, an, he's half, hu half human and half goat. And he has the horns of a goat. And that's where you get the modern depiction of the devil. It's devil worship. During the festival, nude priests called the Percy formed rituals purified by whipping spectators and so on and so on and so on. That is the origin of your 50 shades of grey. 
yeah? But we've got to understand this as a people. And so when you go to Rome, you will see these famous statues and look what everyone's doing. See, this was the purge. If I bring it up a bit more, you see the children and the dogs. I, see, I, I, got, I can go much more deeper, but... No, exactly. You, you, get, you, get the, you get the drift, yeah? Yeah, it's very deep. That's why the Pope today and, the, and all those dons, they know the history that priests have always been doing it to little boys. It's nothing new. That's why now they're trying to say, we've got to stop this now because the public's got onto this now. That's why the Pope is speaking out in February because they know their history. They know where you get the Cupid. They know where you get the Eros from. And that's why when you go down to Trafalgar Square, you see that Piccadilly Circus. And that is the heart of Soho, where anything goes. Where any... Listen, man, are you okay? Turn to your brethren and tell them to lick shut upon Babylon again. Tell them. So, don't worry, bro. We're going to get to black love. Is everyone okay? Part three. Chase Rastafari. different shape but all of them is the same in the end it's about sensitivity it's about passion it's about unconditional giving of self this is to black another love. person and there's love of humanity that's the love that is right now needed most love of humanity but in everything in all of that love there is a soul it's like when you take some eggs and break them and you, and you you take the sheep, you take the shells and mix them up, trying to find the ones that match. When you find the perfect match, that compality results in passion, results in unconditional giving of self. I hope I can say that again. Yeah. yeah. I'm good on any MOK Boulevard. I'm yeah? That's a Jay-Z album. And you know there's a term that says orange is the new black. What does that mean? Because they say black is something that's always in style. That's why they say such and such is the new black. Because being black, you've got to understand, brothers and sisters, man. You don't grow old. You're always in fashion, man. You represent power. I'm going to touch on this later on. So we're going to say, no, orange is not the new black. Love is the new black. Love is the new black, man. And when you fall in love with your people and yourself, that is the fashion. That is the swing. Because I'm telling you, man, black love is revolutionary. And if you really want to be a revolutionary, it doesn't mean going out and killing white people. Hell no. It's about falling in love with who you are, your history, your culture. You can love black people and don't have to hate anyone else. You're just so focused on being you. You're so focused in loving you. Let me see the black fist, man. You love yourself, brothers and sisters. It doesn't mean you're going to hate anyone else. You're full of love for yourself. So when we understand black love, if you know the words, if you know the words, sing along. Yes. I want to hear you today, Lucia. If you know the words, sing along. Oh, you sound good, my people. Sing, man. Sing like I'm paying you money, man. 
man. Never be ashamed of your ancestors. We are the cream of planet Earth, man. Love yourself. Love your people. Love your children. generation. Big vouchers. Respect Muhammad Ali. We had lovers rock, man. Love. happy to be black, make some noise today. Lewisham, you're large. You are large. Let's go a bit more deep. Is everyone okay? Am I boring you now? Because I want to show you. See, black love is very simple. Black love is black power. Say that to the brother and sister beside you. Black love is black power. If you're talking about black love, you can't hate black people and say we want, we want power. The very root and the currency of your power that we are people from the soul, man. And if we fall in love with each other, that is real black power. Yeah, we gotta keep moving and grooving on the soul vibe. Does anyone know who this sister is? Huh? Fantastic. We gonna touch it because this sister, I love this sister. She was the first black woman to be nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actress. Refusing to be typecast, Dorothy Dandridge vowed never to play a slave on screen. Hear Ten that? years later, acting roles had dried up, and Dandridge was dead of a drug overdose with little more than two dollars to her name. When a black actor wins an Oscar or is nominated, in my opinion, I think Hollywood is sometimes not knowing what to do with them because the path isn't clear. Of the yeah. So you know, this sister. We can't forget her, man. She paid a price. She could have gone out and sold herself. But she said, I ain't playing slaves. I want to rise up and love my heritage. Why? Because she understood that she is coming from a people of royalty, man. You are a people of royalty. Listen, man, turn to the brother and sister. Tell them, I am black royalty. Tell them. Words of power, words of energy, man. And that's why I love this brother. He paid a price for this video. He paid a price to do this. You done know. But many of us was cussing this brother and putting him a sellout. That's what he was busy doing. He showed us as royalty. And just for those who don't know the history behind this um, um, video, Michael Jackson went to Egypt, came in. And he realized, wow, all my life they've been telling me lies. So he came back to America and he said, I want to make a film. No, he said he went to Hollywood first. Spielberg and all the top um, directors. And he said, help me make a film. 
portraying black, black people's royalty. But remember what um, Hollywood said? We don't show black people like that. All of Michael Jackson's best friends in Hollywood turned him down. So he said, you know what? I'll do it myself. And Eddie, he got all the top black actors to help him. All the black actors came together. And what is it you're going to do? For those of you that come to my Michael Jackson breakdowns, you know we break this down. Every element, but that's not my subject today. I'm just showing us that's how we used to live, man. Marble floor. Silk. Woven gold. We make the circle, which is the oldest symbol of eternity, of God. We stand in the middle of it, and we turn it from black to gold. That's alchemy. Then you see the sister on the harp showing you classical music from ancient Egyptian times. Jeez. Jeez. Come on, black people, man. Show some love. This is Black Love Day, we got love is a verb in the house. Brother Davis, love that brother to the core. Hear the words, do you remember? This is a message to us. Black people, don't you remember the times? We were in love with each other. This is Black Love Day. Go ahead, Marcia, lick shot from Rasta. People, man. Michael was murdered. He never died. He was murdered. And those of you who want to know more, come to mind. Michael Jackson here. It's the 10th anniversary. We're going to be doing a big thing in London. Come out to this, man. We're going to blow this up. We had the Egyptian snakes. Do you remember, girl? Look at that. All the top black. Michael Jackson, only black people in this video. Come on now. Chase. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Go ahead. In the bar, on the beach, do it me in Spain. Chop. You're not, you're not listening. You're not listening. I know some of you. Some of you are saying, where's Justin Timberlake? Shut up. Justin Timberlake. Woo! Perfection. Michael Jackson demand. That's what you call black love. Everything down to detail. If you're going to do something, do it to the best of your ability. That is black love. Come on, man. Black love is understanding that we are people of soul. Soul power, yeah, is black love. We are people, as Sister Adele said earlier on, okay? Megan has been given some real bad stickers. I wouldn't want to be in her shoes for a billion pounds. You gotta understand what's going on behind the scenes. She's, she's gonna go crazy, remember my words. They're gonna run her out, Redrin, die and I couldn't take it, yeah? But as sister was saying, we're a people of soul. We have to touch, we have to feel. That's our nature, man. That's how we express love, yeah? And that's why I love when I saw this. Beyonce and Jay-Z accept their Brit Award in front of a painting of Meghan Markle. In a play off their iconic pose with the Mona Lisa during their Ape Sh video, B and J stand in front of some artwork featuring a far Look more modern that. celebrity. Showing love. love Thank you so much to the Brit Awards for this incredible honor. You guys have always been so supportive. Everything Militant. is love. Thank you. You're welcome. Jeez. 
The Carters won for Best International oh, you don't Group know what's and sent a video message sisters. since they couldn't attend the ceremony. The clip is quickly going viral, mainly from we show unity of a very each other. Mega, just like the Mona Lisa, Yonsei and her hubby find it hard not to stare. Yeah. Meanwhile, Blue Whoa. Ivy is in the background totally over it. Twitter is going, well, eight for the moment. One fan tweets, the highlight of the Brits is the Carters paying homage to Meghan Markle. The Queen, as we're speaking, is arranging her car crash for Meg Meg Meghan. As we're speaking, the Queen is vexed. It's vexed. We're showing homage to black queens now. That goes deep, brothers and sisters. Yeah? Because you got to understand, we have that crown. And, you know, many of you spend time cussing off Jay-Z. Jay-Z and Beyonce, they're doing great things, man. We've got to study. See, we as a people, we're so quick to judge each other. That's not black love. We show support, man, and love. When you go back to Jay-Z's and Beyonce's double album together, it's deep, man. They talk about protecting each other, protecting the black crown. Listen, listen. Hello, hello. I will never let you shoot the nose off my pharaoh. Yeah. I like purple and purple rain. Trying to put red and blue together, bitch. That's all game. These people try and get me out the paint. I will never let you what? Shoot the nose of my pharaoh. But then, did you catch the next verse? What color was he talking about? Purple, brethren. Why purple? What has purple got to do with your crown? Because if you understand the chakras and the vibrations, that's your crown, man. When you vibrate on different levels, man, you emanate, brothers talk about the frequency of color. And when your frequency is on the highest level, it's purple. That's your crown, man. Yeah? That's the, that's the level that literally we've all got to be vibrating towards. Why? Because you move from the various stages to the I know stage. That's the God force inside of you. Turn to your brothers and sisters again and tell them, man, there's levels to this game. Tell them that, brethren. There's levels to this game. There's levels to this game, brethren. Because listen up, man. Don't waste your time being depressed, man. As black people, as African people, man, our nature is to be positive. And to be positive, you've got to be vibrating on higher frequencies. The European, he vibrates on a lower frequency. That's why in this world, it's more down. With us, we like colors, we like sound, we like music, we like dress. So therefore, we've got to raise our vibration up to the purple 1000 God consciousness. You've got to understand who you are. Jay-Z was getting deep. And that's why I loved when my sister Adele touched on my art. Very deep. Is everyone okay? No, tell me, am I boring you now? All right. Do you want to go a bit more deeper? Lick shop pump Babylon back foot. Jeez. All right, so may my art be with ye, man. Let's break this down. You see, because when you're looking at my art, yeah, it's very deep. When brother talked about the frequency of the om and the mmm, understand that's a vibration that emits the color black. The sound of the universe is a humming sound. Even the term is saying humming, hum. That's why when you, when you meditate, you do the hum. Because that mm is a vibration of blackness. How do I know that? How do they know that? Go into the etymological root of words. Where do you think you get the term umbrella from? Umbrella means there's a shade of blackness underneath it. That's why they call it umbrella. And various other colors. I, mean, I've, got, I mean, I've got a whole breakdown on the um. You are the people of the um. That's why in Islam, in Arabic, we call the community ummah. Yeah, a black nation that comes together. So my art, let's go back to the movies. You see, Matrix was deep because these represented the wings of my art. If you understand the history of the, who's been to my Matrix breakdown? Oh, see, I need to do this again, brethren, man. Oh, wow, wow. The film Matrix, when it was written originally, it was written to be played by Will Smith, Jada, uh, Baba Baba knows, Jada Pinkett. It was the trinity of three black people. 
that represented the mother, father, and son trinity that goes way back to ancient Kemet and beyond Kemet, to be honest with you. So when we look at this, she's dressed in all black because black represents the power of the nation she's in. So she represents my aunt and Isis in truth, and she levitates. Why? Sis, I know this may sound crazy, but you had the ability to levitate back in the day. I can't go into it right now. That's not my break. They were giving me black love today. You, are, you got to understand how in tuned you are when you're ready. Yeah, I'm going to make touching that before I finish, okay? So, so in the matrix, you saw her do the pose of my aunt. That's the vulture. And if, why, why the vulture? Because when you look at a vulture, it's one of those birds that fly, one of the highest birds that fly in the highest current in the air. So if it reaches a particular current, then it stops flapping its wings. And it flows on the current. And when you look up, it actually looks like it's levitating. So every time you see pictures of the pharaohs and the queens, I should say, the queens, you see there's a bird or a, feather, a, 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 a vulture over her. Please go back and look it. Because sisters, that represented you. Yeah? You had the spirit and the power to levitate. And so when you go back to the matrix, it goes back to what Sister Adele was talking about. She represented Isis, Osiris, or Osor, Aset, okay? And therefore, when you're looking at this film, you're looking at a love story. I don't have to go through the story again because Adele dealt with the story already. But you're looking at the reality. This was what they were playing. Yeah? This is what they were playing. It was a black, African, comedic love story. Okay? Hence, hence, let's go back to those words again. Hello. I would never let you shoot the nose off my pharaoh. Yeah. yeah. I like purple and purple rain. Trying to put red and blue together, bitch. That's on game. Try and get me out the paint. Yeah? So, sisters, I'm asking you, defend the black man. We know we're rubbish. We know we are. We've let you down for 500 years, man. We are mashed up. As a, as a nation of black men, if you, bought us in, if you bought us from a shop, you take it back. But don't give up on us. That's what I'm trying to say to you, please. Don't give up on that because, again, when you watch The Matrix, you're seeing that story today. Because the real star wasn't Neo. It was Trinity. She was the real star. Can I prove it? Watch. See, Neo, he's fighting the system. He gets to move 303. And like the black man today, due to slavery, we have been killed. We have. Osiris had his private parts chopped off and thrown away. That was symbolic of us as black men. They've taken away our manhood. So now the black man's killed in today's society. But guess what? The black woman has to have our back, not give up on us. <coughs> Trinity represented a nation of black women. So watch, it can't be. He's meant to be the savior. Black men, you are the chosen ones, man. Check him. Check him. He's gone. He's gone. See, slavery done a good job on the black man. Killed our inspiration. Killed our aspirations. Goodbye, Mr. Anderson. Goodbye, Mr. Anderson. You never call him Neo. He had his name changed. So look up Trinity now. That's when you know you've got a good black woman by your side. Listen carefully. The Oracle told me I will fall in love with a dead man. I know you've got to be the one. Why? You can't be dead, black man. Why can't he be dead? Because I love you, man. See, black woman, if you love us, even in spite of our condition that you see us in today, there's a chance that you can... Look at that, look at that kiss. Kiss us, man. Show some TLC to us. Put the spirit of God back in the black man. Come on, my queen. Now watch. Sit. Now get up. 
Now get up. It has to be a black woman. Get up. But you're sleeping. Get up. But when the black man wakes up. No. He'll understand it. You know what? Why am I running from you, man? See? When the black man realizes that he's God. Now he understands he has the forces over nature. Instead of running, he could look at it and say, I was running from that. Wow. I don't have to run. See? All those bullets, see? That's his council tax. That's electricity. He'd be like, I don't have to run. You don't know, my queen. You don't know. You don't know. I don't have to run. He's the one. He's the one. See? I don't see men. I see mathematics. I see formulas. And a black man, we can work out mathematics to solve any problem in life. Watch. Watch. See? You don't have to run for the white man. That's you. <laughs> Let me hear you say Guan Papa G. You don't know, you don't know, you don't know. Why do we say Guan Papa G? Because you know my parents are from Jamaica. When we say Guan, it just means go. Guan. Papa G, P A P A G. Positive attitude produces awesome greatness. Yeah, you don't know, you don't know. So please. Turn to the brother or sister beside you. Look them in the eyes and say, Go on, Papa G. Yeah. Show love, man. Show love. Show love. All right. I'm nearly finished now. Don't worry. It's my last. We're in our last section now. Do you want to go a bit more deeper? All right. I'm nearly finished. Let's listen to some deep stuff now. Our last section. Let's go into some purple love. I'm back with Jay-Z. Listen to the words. We're the children of the sun. Never forget that. you I know no I know I am I know I am I can see some nervous smiles because <laughs> you know we got at home okay but it, it looks good but it's not our African culture we don't have to whip each other we don't have to kick each other to get some high we're children of the sun man let's see what, what that means let's see what that means then let's see what that means I'm gonna behave myself Chew, chew. Now let's break this down. You see, as African people and as people of the black melanin core, do you know that we are cosmic? We weren't born in caves. 
We are cosmic people. When you look at us, you're looking at creation in totality. You are and I am a part of that universe. The reason why we call ourselves black is because that is the that is the very material of the universe that we were made from. It's deep. In the Holy Quran, it's called triple darkness. Black mud fashioned into shape. This is me and you, brethren. So we are this. I'm dealing with love now. I'm dealing with love. So inside of this black love, we have that gland, the pineal gland. When that emits light and chemicals, it links us with the outer universe and the inner universe. I'm leading somewhere. Walk with me slowly. Yeah? And so, Brother Marshall, Lima, he touched on this. Understand, we have that God gland inside of us, man. That connects. Why does it connect? Because when it's alive and working, that little gland in the center of our brain behind our eyes, the ancients called it the third eye. I see you so much higher. The universal eye. It's time to roll in. The eye that sees, not just physically, but spiritually. It's the eye that can go anywhere in the universe. Do you know you can send yourself across the universe? We've lost that ability today. But this pioneer gram is working. It connects. Use your imagination, it says. And when we connect as male and female, we connect with planets. We work that way up, right the way through to the mind. We don't have to whip each other to get that high. I'm dealing with something deep now. When we make love as black African people, as God and goddesses, it's mental love. It's a love using the pioneer gland that connects the inner nature. Look, man. When you saw the ancients with the serpent coming out of the forehead, the serpent represents wisdom. Wisdom. The serpent is not wicked. We use it right the way through. Hence, when you saw Michael Jackson dancing, you saw all the snake movements coming out. It goes deep in what we think. But we make love with the third eye. When we connect those eyes, so let me you then you again. see the real essence of African spirituality. All the way from Egypt to India, we keep moving. And when you open the eyes, the eye sees the inner soul. Remember I said to you earlier on, we are soul people. We have soul food, we have soul music. And when you connect with someone's soul, it gives you an orgasmic high. No chemicals needed, no instruments needed. When you're in tune with yourself and your partner, then there's a spiritual connection that takes place. Oh, sorry about that. Is everyone okay? I went backwards. I'm not. Oh, here we go. Don't worry. When the mind is awake, it connects. I'll do this quickly. When that third eye comes, when the pineal gland, there are so many things that we can We connect with male and female forces. And you hear what the words? Use your imagination. You connect. And the ancients, many people don't appreciate this. In ancient Egypt, they call the third eye, the pineal gland, the doorway to the universe. That's one of the terms. When your third eye is open, it connects with every part of the universe. Therefore, as African people, when we have two souls that can connect, using the third eye, the spiritual eye, you're not making love to someone, you're making love to everyone. And everything is 
Making love and doing prayer is the same thing. You connect with all of Rastafari. Your mind is traveling. You connect not just with the person, you connect with their ancestors. Look, man. Leon spoke about the various waves. That is sound waves. Notice the movements. That is light waves. Notice the movements. That is waves of the ocean. When two people make love, don't you see that is the action? As African people, you're connecting light, you're connecting sound, and you're connecting water. Lick shop on Babylon. Understand, you are water, you are electricity, you are sound, and when you move those forces together, you connect right across. You use your imagination, you open that third eye, and you keep moving, and you realize you don't need no bondage, you don't need no whips. Open yourself. Open your mind and you'll connect. And it ain't just the physical act of making love. When you love black people and you love yourself, you are literally connected with the forces of nature. Inside of you is the universe. So when you connect, you can say to that person, I see you. You don't see them with your physical eyes. You see them with your inner eye. You see them with your third eye. You can actually connect with their ancestors in that spirit of love. You're connecting of forces. So let me nurture your reaction. Brothers and sisters, are you okay? Because you see, black love is fundamental. It's more than just physical. It's literally, you've got to understand this. Before I end, you see this, what film is it? Many of you, don't want to see that. Who's been to my Black Panther breakdown? Oh, all right, all right, all right. Because you know, I'm telling you, man, this film is so, look, I said this before. This one scene goes, so, this destroyed all the myths what Oliver's been trying to plant inside of us. Just this one scene alone. Deep. They get steeper. That's the black woman. That's the ISIS. Drop your weapon. Will you kill me, my love? Oh, I can't. Without question. That's black love. This film was epic. Have you ever seen that in the movie? Ever seen that in the movie? That's a black man that's opened his third eye and sees the goddess in the black woman. No, no, I'm being honest. When I saw this in the movies, in the cinema, for the, no, I'm just weeing, weeing, weeing. Splash, just splashing, splashing. Are we crazy, man? Sorry, sister. I wink the sorry, Stella, I'm, I'm sorry, okay? <laughs> because I said, this is what I've been waiting for, man. You are literally looking at a change. There's a revolution taking place. And that revolution is the revolution of black love. So before I finish, brothers and sisters, turn for the last time to your partner, to your brethren. Look them in their eyes for the last time tonight. Look them in their eyes and tell them with your third eye, I love you. Tell them. This is black love. This is revolution. This is the most revolutionary act that we can take place today. And we need to really find out who we are. As I finish now, 
study books. We've got some bookshops around. Yeah. Marcus Garvey, the honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. Make some noise for our brother. This is what you call black love, man. The miseducation of the Negro. You can get it all at the back, down the side. Check these books out. Because if you can invest in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, you're much more powerful and a much more of a comrade in the struggle because one enlightened man is worth more than 300 slaves. Enlighten yourself, brothers and sisters. You are the best. Who is the, who is the original man? The original man is the Asiatic black man, the maker, the owner, the cream of the planet Earth, gods of the universe. That is male and female. Know who you are. My name is Andrew Mohammed. They call me the investigator. Thank you very much, man. One love. Black Panther. Black Panther. Black Panther. Respect. Thank you. T'Challa. Wow. 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 Yeah, I don't even feel like using words. I feel like doing what Andrew Mohammed suggested. Yeah. <laughs> Can we all do it? Can we all do it? It's too much. Yeah, I don't Our know if there's any words. <laughs> Andrew Mohammed is a true champion of our community. True or not? So this is what we're going to do. Basically, we want to thank so many people. We want to thank all of the people.